Uh, welcome all the viewers of Audio Technology Magazine. Another year, another Integrate show. Um, there's a lot of new stuff happening on DLive. Last year we introduced DLive to the Australian market. It has come a long, long way and there's a lot of exciting development here. There's a few things that are special and very recent on DLive, um, particularly IP remote controllers. And if you have a look at the rack, there's some native um, networking cards now available for the DLive system. And of course, um, editor, director on DLive is available since 1.2 firmware. 1.2 firmware was released in June and just now in August we released 1.3. The main addition to the system in 1.3 is the addition of the IP controllers. DLive offers currently two different types. Both of these controllers um, can be connected to the surface or the mix rack. There is a total of 16 of each that can be connected to a DLive system. Eight of each to the surface and eight of each to the mix rack. So let me talk you quickly through the IP8. As you can see, it has eight channel strips. It comes with a 60 millimeter motorized fader. There's a button above and below the display and there's a color display. Functions can be assigned to the IP8 via the surface or via director software. The buttons, if you drag a channel onto a channel strip in the IP8, there is a default functionality that this button becomes the PFL and this becomes the local mute. Of course, these buttons can be individually assigned and the functionality can be changed. The six buttons here on the side are default used for switching the layers between different channels and different inputs and outputs. But of course, if you only need a limited number of layers on the unit, these buttons can be assigned to other functions as well, such as tap delay timing, mix select, etc. Same for this. This um, button changes the brightness of the um, displays here, but also this function can have assigned any different functionality at all within the system. The IP6 has rotaries and it comes in the same form factor as the ME1 and this already indicates that the IP6 quite possibly can have lots of application in um, monitoring for stage. Channel strips work identical as on the IP8 so you can assign any functionality from the DLive system onto any of these six channel strips. Again, default is that the button below the display is the PFL and the button on top is the mute. And again, you can have those buttons assigned individually. The buttons below the rotary control, uh, there are six of them, are by default assigned to be layer control. If you don't need all the layers, you can use these buttons for other functions as well. So typically on a, on a stage monitoring environment, you would have your own mix, your number of instruments assigned to this, and then mix this all towards a stereo output that would come out of the rack or out of the surface into a in-ear transmitter. Um, director, I should, I should mention, um, offers full control as well. And with Director and IP both talking to the dealer system via the networking ports, of course, next future development is having dual surface mode, which will be connected through the Giga S card in either the rack or the surface. The two native networking cards is uh, first the Waves V3, which gives us 128 channels um, recording straight via one single Cat5 cable from the card into a, a laptop or a MacBook. And the Giga S card is used for digital split between two systems or for dual surface mode in the future. That's about it. The rest you've seen already, of course, um, expanders and such are familiar to you. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, as always, more questions, visit www.lnheath.com. Cheers.